So, um, we're going from an island in the Pacific to another mm -hmm. island, mm -hmm. and we, we continue with Audrey Tang. Hello, everybody. I'm Audrey. I come from Taiwan, and Taiwan is an island with 23 million people, and we're six hours in the future. Uh, in, in the future, uh, we put a supercomputing hacker into the prime minister position. In the future, we solved already the Uber problem. In the future, uh, we also introduce virtual reality to deliberation, and in the future, we resolve also the singularity. And uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so here's how. Ha so it's been very fast. Yeah, exactly. And so, so here's I only have ten minutes. So here's here's how how we did it. Um, just uh, yesterday, uh, last Friday, we, uh, our new president came to office, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen. I voted for her. I'm very happy. I voted for her because um, I live with eight cats and two dogs. And uh, she's a fellow animal lover with very similar ideas like marriage equality, diversity, abolishing uh, capital punishment, animal welfare, even animal rights. And then so, so she's just so, so great. And the, the thing is that She's uh, first family because she's not married or partnered. This is our first family. And so uh, you cannot really bribe the first family members. Well, you can with catnip, but they will not change Dr. Tsai's policy for you. And uh, the important thing here is that from the January general election to the May, which is the finish of transition of power, the four months was free of party politics. There's uh, completely peaceful. And that's because our outgoing prime minister was a director of engineering at Google who quit his job at Google to work in the administration as the prime minister. And so. Okay, well, <laughs> then you will take more time. So, so then um, Simon, Simon's main contribution was introducing this open data by default policy where all the government systems under 1 million uh, euros in budget are open data by default. And that brought Taiwan to the number one spot in the open data uh, global index. We become a machine readable country. And uh, the next prime minister, the current one, Lin Chen, is also independent. There's no party affiliation. So the two nonpartisan prime ministers agree a transparent transfer of power with all the materials of all the ministry published first on the internet and then next to the next administration. And this is the norm. Our Taipei City, the capital mayor, a medical professor, is also no party affiliation and also the occupier. And uh, then our vice president, also Chen Jianren, a researcher of epidemics, also independent. And this be happened because of the occupier, which I already talked about. Basically, we're saying, you know, fuck ideologies. Uh, we, the sunflower generation, is now going into the, the government and we're rebuilding it from the ground zero up is the gov zero spirit. Now, why do we have thousands of civic hackers hacking on democracy? Because we are the first generation who speak out freely. Our parents' generation suffered great brutality at censorship dictatorship area. The year 1988 was the first year of press freedom, and it's the year of personal computers. And 1996 was the first presidential election. It's also the year of Wild Web, right? So the idea is that internet and democracy for us is not two things, it's the one thing. And when we say free, we always mean Freedom. And when we work on uh, software for freedom, we, w we see its social impact. Like in Nudibu, they, they are using the tools that we improved during the Sunflower Movement. So, yes. who, who, give, who wants to give like a few more minutes to Audrey? So I can speak so slower? So she, she, she can <laughs> okay. speak a little bit slowly. Okay. okay. So we're going to uh, let five, them five some minutes. minutes from the question okay. times, OK? OK, thank you. So uh, by the end of uh, the, the 2014, after the Occupy, uh, the occupiers won practically every major city in Taiwan in the city level elections, something that happened here. And so the, the idea is that with the uh, occupiers at the city level government, the national premier just resigned saying, okay, I don't understand these people. And then a new prime minister, the engineer says, okay, I want to work with occupiers to reinvent policy making. And we did a survey that posed what kind of uh, national domestic policy you want to solve. And the top one was the virtual epidemic that paralyzed all the governments around the globe. It is the epidemic called Uber. And uh, Uber is not just one company, it is a, a virus of the mind, a meme. Uh, it causes self-sharing economy. And there's no, nothing that a sovereign state can do. I mean, you, the Paris can shut down its local office, but then it just keeps running, right? So the, when the taxi driver surrounded the Ministry of Transport, saying we want to negotiate with the sharing economy, you know, how do you negotiate with a virus, with an epidemic? There are different category of things, right? So, well, the Minister of uh, Cyberspace, Jacqueline Tsai, who quit her job as Director of Law in IBM Asia, says the only way that we can do this is by deliberation, by getting everybody to talk to each other. Because only by thinking about one problem very deeply together, listen to each other, and this is the immunity, this is inoculation against the virus of the mind, because then people become immune to the future per PR campaigns. 
And the proper deliberation, as many of you know, involves four stages, the facts, the feelings, well, how do we react about those facts? The ideas, what are the possibilities opened up by the feelings? And then finally, the collective consensus on those possibilities. But in the bad old days, it wasn't like that. The government, the private sector lobbyists, the civil society on the street have different copies of facts. They don't even agree on the basic facts. So in that environment, uh, without facts, without sharing each other's feelings, idea grow up to be something very dangerous virus of the mind called ideology. And ideology's symptom is that it blinds us to other people's feelings. It blinds us to the facts that are uncovered. So Minister Jacqueline Tsai said, okay, I'm not releasing just the open data, but also the meeting transcript, the tr studies, the analysis, anything that as a minister she receives, she pu published online. And she asked the private sectors and the civil society to do the same. And then we introduced a uh, visualization interactive system called Polis, a startup in Seattle. <coughs> it's free software, and, and on two dimensions, you can see how uh, apart or how convergent people are, your Facebook friends and so on. And you go there, that slide, you see one statement from your friend, and you say yes or no. Once you say yes or no, your avatar moves on this plane so that you can see which camp are you mostly likely belong. But we use it in a way that says, if anybody could come up with a statement that convinced more than 80% of the total population, then we bind ourselves to use that as the agenda of rulemaking and face-to-face -face negotiation. And so, all, everybody, taxi drivers, Uber drivers, uh, Uber passengers, uh, like ride-sharing community, everybody came online and the 3,000 people shared all sorts of ideas and by the fourth week we have a set of seven consensus items agreed by everybody with the top one being 95% consensus from a Mozilla Firefox hacker who says the government should subsidize and work with the co-op community setting up a five-star rating system so that they can ha compete head-to-head -head with Uber and encourage this kind of local sharing community. And so this become our agenda and we brought everybody to the table and, and to broadcast this transcripted life for the whole nation to see. And with this kind of structure, because there is clear consensus, what the administration has to do now is just to translate it into legalese. We put this back, they code, and then Finally, just this Monday, it's ratified into law. Uh, Taiwan has a now a, a new law that says app-based uh, dispatching systems are legal as long as they don't undercut existing on the taxis. And then they must uh, clearly de display identification, per right revenue must be taxed, audited indep independently, and so on. And there's already civil society-based sharing economy uh, ventures entering the market, and we hope, of course, Uber will uh, succumb to this new, new situation. And, but things like Uber and then Airbnb after that, which we also deliberated very successfully, are high profile. But there are many other things like uh, land justice, uh, justice reform, cultural policy that doesn't get much spotlight from the mainstream media because there's no fighting point. So the occupiers also created our own media. To the left is the reporter, which was crowdfunded, everything's open source, creative commons, and the, the crowdfund was 300,000 euros in the first week. And uh, so, so basically we have a investigative journalism on public issues that is subscribed by 100,000 people. That is the new channel from the occupiers. And to the right is the Talk to Taiwan, an interactive web TV show that is crowdsourced our content. So the content was crowdsourced with the police system that we say, okay, this week we're inventing maybe the mayor talking about Medicare, maybe the prime minister talking about cyber infrastructure, and then this will determine the agenda. We do a design sketch, infographics, and then the a person just talk like this for one hour. And then the first 40 minutes, they explain their vision very carefully, and then the 20 minutes after that, we do this rapid uh, fire Q&A so that everybody can see on the, on the same page. And because we use this kind of VR recording at first, uh, it creates a different kind of space. Because with traditional cameras, you're just a blurred talking hat, and you imagine an audience behind it, and you talk very loud and very like, like divisive, right? But with this kind of things, we become attuned to the people around us. Because if I tell a joke and they're not laughing, everybody can just turn around and see that they're not laughing. So it, it becomes a listening uh, space. And we also use this not just for national policies, but also for lo local-based negotiations, like this is the Feiyan village where the uh, construction company, the archeologist, the ecologist, and the local resident all sit down uh, come up with 11 preparatory meetings, the same presentations, and determined a balanced, eclectic uh, compromise between the construction interests and the ecological interests. Now, for things like this, it's okay. 
But for things like large-scale uh, land use planning, this is not that okay because while we have open data by default, the architect's vision or the land use urban planner's vision are not that easily translated into everybody's language. So we need a ladder of experts. So we're now also experimenting with the Taiwan Best HTC Vive technology to put everybody into the vision. This is not an artist in, uh, impression. This is real software uh, so that we can sit down and deliberate in the future airport in version one, version two, take out this wall, see how the sunlight changes and so on. And this has applications like this is the Formosan uh, clouded leopard. It went extinct around the time I was born. Taiwan is uh, home to about 1.5% of all species on Earth and 10% of all marine species on Earth. It's huge biodiversity. But their habitats are being destroyed. And when the 2014 Occupy Parliament won, uh, the head of parliament said, OK, we agree, now go home. We did not go home. We go to the environmental agency, surrounding the environmental agency, until they uh, cancel this road construction that would make the leopard cat extinct. So the thing is that, uh, why, why can we mobilize so, so much? I was so touched at the time. It's because the cats are really cute. And, and <laughs> I mean, it's true. Uh, but what about the stray dogs? What about the, the animals that are not less, like, less cute, but equally important to the biosphere. And the answer came to me when I was in Paris Disneyland two uh, months ago. Uh, there is this Ratatouille virtual reality ride where for five minutes I was put into shrunk in the size of a rat and then chased by humans dropping from the ceiling and so on in virtual reality. So I'm like, aha, this is how we put the, the viewpoints of all the animals to the people and so that we can deliberate not only for humans but also for animals. Now. Uh, these VR technologies were originally designed for gaming, but I like you to uh, imagine democracy as a game, but with a purpose. It's fun to participate in a democracy deliberation, that's fine. It solves the sortation problem, but it's not just about voting, because voting is just like clicking like, right? It's just one bit of information. And then we have open data where you can share all the individual budgets and laws and items and statistics, and then we get a bigger, the bigger picture, which is better. And now we have a, a working forum system where anything you ask, all the ministers uh, are required to reply within seven days, and you bridge the gap between the public servants and the civil society. And after that, we can have a real discussion in which uh, the public uh, issues are uh, commented like the Talk to Taiwan. And finally, we can have binding deliberation due to the uh, result of those uh, uh, discussions and deliberations and finally sign them into law. But what I want to tell you is that this last one, the agenda setting power, this level of the game never comes from above. This only comes when we are ready uh, as people, as citizens, to share authentically the purpose of our lives with each other. Otherwise, this never comes from above. And the thing that blocks us from authentically sharing our life's purpose are the divisive ideologies. Those uh, ideologies are virus of the mind that split people into filter bubbles with aid of social media technologies that says, OK, we only talk with labor or with capital or, or with only science or only with religion and so on. And so it, it just blinds people to each other. But the problem is that another kind of technology, disruptive technologies, like artificial intelligence, virtual reality, self-driving cars, are forcing all the community to clash into the middle, sometimes very violently. And in this kind of the case, the American narrative is that, OK, so with the ultimate clash will just happen in the middle. It's called technological singularity. And in the singularity, it, what it means to me is that all the people lose, lose all our agency at the same time. And it, this is obviously dy dystopic, but it's only because if we subscribe to the ideology that say this is what an individual can do, define the limit of what the individual can do, and now machine do it better, so of course we're terrified. But the singularity doesn't have to be this way. In mathematics, singularity can be resolved very peacefully by plotting this on the extra, extra uh, T dimension, which means that we meet at its origin, and then we talk to each other, and we meet, listen, and then we meet again, and we listen again. And, and by this time, we have a multitude of people, not just people, but animals, rivers, plants, and so on. But most importantly, the multitude of our past and future imagination of ourselves. And this multitude meet at the origin, become a plurality. And once we have a plurality, we're ready for the singularity. The singularity may be near, but plurality is here. So I want to say something about uh, that Dr. Tsai Ing-wen when she talked um, in her inauguration speech. She said, before democracy was a showdown between two opposing values, but now democracy is about a conversation between many diverse values. We must build a united democracy that just is not hijacked by ideology. It's an efficient democracy that responds to the issues of economy of society and a pragmatic democracy that let people take care of each other. And this is our experiment in reinventing democracy in Taiwan. It's just by listening to each other. So thank you for listening.
<laughs> so, wow. I hope you are still alive. Um, so, thank you.